Now you'll use a neutral density filter whenever there's too much light to achieve the shutter speed, ISO, and aperture combination that you want for your image. Maybe it's three stops too bright, you'll use a three stop neutral density filter to bring your shutter speed down to where you want it to be. Neutral density filters are available in both threaded or drop-in. Threaded would be like the polarizing filter, the drop-ins would be these square filters. They're available in one stop, two stop, three stop, and ten stop densities. So you've got flexibility uh, to use the, any combination you need to. Especially with the drop-in filters it's nice because I can stack up to three of them in the holder at once. So I can get up to 14 stops of neutral density or 15 stops of neutral density if I need that much uh, stopping power uh, for my image. Now here we're going to look at some water that's a little calmer than, than the ocean. This is on, on a bay. Um, and for this shot here, there's no filter being used at 1 25th of a second at f11. Uh, you can see the water has kind of a gelatinous look to it, kind of like a jello mold that you're shaking back and forth. Um, it's not an overly interesting look to water. It's not one that I typically aim for, but just for demonstration purposes, I wanted to show you how you can change the look of a scene just by using filters, even when the water is not really that active. Uh, so this next shot, I added a three-stop neutral density filter, and you can see how the motion of the small waves that were lapping at the shoreline is enhanced just by capturing a little bit more motion um, by using the three-stop ND filter. Now I'm at a quarter of a second rather than 1 25th of a second um, at the same f-stop and ISO. If I really want to change it, I'll throw in the 10-stop ND filter into my filter holder and really slow things down. And now I've got this smooth, glassy look to the water. You can still see a little bit of motion happening there. This is a one-minute exposure. But the glassy smoothness of the water contrasts nicely with the uh, wood pilings that are poking out of, out of the water itself. So it creates a very different scene, a little bit more dramatic, uh, more peaceful looking, definitely. So again, changing, using longer so, uh, shutter speeds will give you a more peaceful look to, uh, to your image in that sense. Here at one, one sixth of a second at f16 with no filters, I get, again, you know, that raging New England ocean a stormy kind of ocean crashing against the rocks like this. Um, at 1 6 I'm within that sweet spot shutter speed that I'm looking for to hold the form of the wave as it crashes against the rocks. Now in this next shot, I use 10 stop neutral density filter. I'm at uh, almost two and a half minutes, a little more than two and a half minutes of exposure time, and I've completely eliminated any waves in the scene, and that water becomes much more glassy looking, much more calm and peaceful looking, uh, and it's a completely different feel to the same scene. So depending on, on what shutter speed you use and how you achieve that shutter speed by using filters, you can change the feeling of the scene that you're photographing and get two completely different images from the same scene just minutes apart. I mentioned timing a little bit earlier. One of the things that I'll do when I see a scene such as this, I see the rocks in the foreground, I, I watched the water as it came up onto these rocks a few times, so I knew that water was coming up occasionally onto these rocks and I watched where it was going so I knew where it would be when I photographed it. And then I set myself up so that uh, you know, I would be in the place that I wanted to be to capture that water. And then it's just a matter of waiting for the water and capturing the timing just right. So this scene here, you can see there's no water rushing into the scene. It's in the background in that channel there uh, in this cove. And it's really not that interesting a shot. But once you add water as a compositional element in this next shot, you can see how waiting for that water and timing it just right adds that level of interest to a shot that takes a bland shot, really a shot with no interest to it, into one that's much more interesting and much more appealing to the viewer uh, by waiting for that water to come over that rock. So it's a matter of paying attention to the water, where does it go when it, when it flows in, um, and what does it do when it, when it flows over these rocks. You want to also take care not to stand in a place where uh, your camera is going to be at risk if you do. You know, you want to make sure that, you know, you, you put yourself first and your camera first. Um, water can be a dangerous thing, especially photographing on the ocean, on ocean rocks. It gets slippery. Um, it can be unexpectedly uh, rough at times. So you want to take some care when and pay attention to your surroundings. Um, cameras don't like getting wet, and you want to make sure that that doesn't happen either uh, if you can help it. So definitely make sure you pay attention to where you are. Now in this next shot, you can see, again see how changing shutter speech changes your scene. This sunrise shot here, I didn't use a neutral density filter, I used a grad on the sky to hold that back. That's the subject of an upcoming webinar. But you can see how the, the rushing water over these rocks uh, creates a feeling of movement 
um, a sense that the water is going to splash you at any second. It's really kind of a dynamic image. In this next shot, using a 10-stop neutral density filter, you can see how I was able to use, create a two-minute two exposure and create that sense of peace and calm as the sun comes up from the same scene, just minutes apart. Uh, it's, and it creates a completely different look and feel to an image. By using filters to allow me to vary my shutter speeds like that, I'm able to create different feelings for the viewer. One, might, one type of image might appeal to one viewer and one type of image might appeal to another viewer. If you vary your shutter speeds while you're out shooting like this, you'll be able to create images to appeal to both viewers.